Hey, welcome to Sweet 301. It's the August edition, and we're coming to you live from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, to give you all the updates and news around all the Cold Club Sports Leagues. You can watch our broadcast on our Sweet 301 page, as well as Facebook and on YouTube. Yep, and remember to like our Facebook pages and follow our Twitter accounts for the latest news and media. Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel for videos around our leagues and to watch previous episodes of Sweet 301. All right, Christian, good to see you again. Yeah, good to have you back. Thank you, thank you. I was on sabbatical, uh, you know, checking out the spring training facilities to make sure that they were still where we left them Up last. To and, yep, everything's good there. So uh, back in the office, ready to get get to it as we, uh, you know, we get into August. You know, kids are going to be returning to school here in about two weeks, if not a little bit sooner. So. Uh, the new season is right around the corner, but uh, let's get into it. Let's start, uh, what do we want to start with, baseball? Let's go with baseball. Let's go with baseball. Well, since Jimmy uh, Henderson is sitting right here, let's invite him onto the set, and uh, he can run us through some baseball updates. Hello. 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 Um, yeah, so baseball updates, we're going to start with fall tournaments. We have five that are going on this fall. Um, four of them are full, but that is not to say, um, you know, you can email us to get on a wait list should something happen, and uh, you might be able to get in. Um, but starting off, our eighth annual Battle Creek Blast in Battle Creek, Michigan. Um, that is one of the ones that is full, but like I mentioned, um, please email somebody in our front office if you'd like to be put on the wait list there. That is being ran by uh, Rollins Rep Mike Galletti. Um, moving on to the next one, the second annual Charleston Fall Invitational at the Shawnee Sports Complex in Charleston, West Virginia. That is being ran by myself, and that is also full. Um, but again, like I said, you can get on a wait list. Well, I think what I'm learning from this is you're talking right there on the board, right there on the screen. You've got three tournaments. You said there's five. That's, that's 30, 30, 32, 40, 48, 44 teams participating in tournaments right there on the screen. Uh, they're already loaded up. I think what the, the lesson here is those teams that are out there, don't procrastinate. You want to do something? You want to get involved? Get in, Get in on early. Get your Absolutely. You know, if you said contact, con yeah. You know, if, if Charleston sounds like a great tournament for you, contact Jimmy right now. Get on that list for next year, so you get the early invite and make sure you don't miss out next year. So anyway, proceed, please. Yeah, these fall tournaments are a great way. You know, all the games are exhibitions, so uh, to get everybody some playing time, and uh, also you probably see some teams that you're not going to see in the regular season, so you get some new competition, right? Um, but moving on to Wood Wars, uh, ran by Ryan Norris down in Euless, Texas. Um, it's a wooden bat tournament down there that he's had, I don't know how many years, but it's been going on a long while, I believe, right? Oh, yeah. It's Since 1930. <laughs> I know I was at the 10th anniversary one, and that was like four years ago. So let's say it's been going on for 14 years. 14 years since 1930. General Custard uh, started the first one. Yeah? Yeah. Is that Norris's uncle? Yes. Okay. Um, moving on to the first annual State College Classic. This is a new fall tournament we have going on in State College at the Louis e. Silva Baseball Complex. That is being ran by Antonio Saka. Um, so please, there are still spots open in that tournament. So if you are interested, please get with him ASAP and secure your spot. Um, and then lastly, but not least, the 10th annual Greenville Fall Invitational at Conesty Park in Greenville, South Carolina. That's another one that's been around for a while and is always a good turnout at a beautiful facility down there. Is that one also full? It is also full. Okay, so if you want to get in one of our tournaments, State College is the place to be. State College is the place to be. Um, and like Sandy said, do not procrastinate because that one will fill up before you know it as well. Yes, yes. Good stuff. Well, I like to see us expanding into more fall tournament op offerings, and uh, uh, you know, obviously the teams are gobbling it up. So there's a reason we we keep expanding. So good stuff, and c congratulations to the teams that signed up early, got the held their got their spots in those events. Uh, it's going to be a great time for sure. Ready to get back to baseball. Um, recently, in July, we had the uh, rules meeting the NCBA rules meeting, and uh, the panel got together, went through pr rule changes, proposals, and those uh, uh, rule changes have been implemented. Do you want to take us through some updates there? Yes, we'll go over some um, rule updates. I'm not going to read through all of them, but just cover the, kind of the, the bigger ones. 
starting off with um, two things related to statistics here. All stats from prior week's games must be submitted by midnight of the following Thursday, and any team found intentionally uploading inaccurate stats will be subject to possible disciplinary action. Um, so the thing to take away here, guys, is make sure you're getting your stats in. We, uh, you know, have built the website to, to improve your experience as being part of the league. Um, we want you to put your stats in. That helps us pick players of the week, all Americans at the end of the year when it's when it's time to do that. Um, and as mentioned, you know, if you're not doing it, you're going to be subject to probation and any other disciplinary action. And I think the reason these rules were proposed and came about was some teams for reverse scouting purposes were hiding their statistics. They didn't want people to see who was hitting well, who was pitching well, so that they couldn't get a read on them. And then at the end of the year, they'd dump them all on the website at the same time so that they'd be eligible for All-American awards, uh, uh, which, you know, teams had grief about. It's like, hey, I, you know, we want to show off who our players are, uh, but we can't do that because these teams are, uh, you know, not sharing their information too. So that's why these rules were proposed and, and thus voted upon, approved, and... Uh, adopted. so No longer able to beat the system. Nope. It's all about closing loopholes, right? Right. Um, and the other one I want to cover, no, there's two more I want to cover on this slide. Um, we reversed the, reversed the previous rule. Um, now all fall eligible, eligible teams are going to be required to schedule one conference series in the fall. Um, and the reason for that being you know, weather in the fall in a lot of places in the country is just more co cooperative than it is in the spring. So we want to at least get one series scheduled at a minimum um, just to help out with your spring schedule. Once rainouts and reschedule starts happening, things can get a little messy. So we're going to try to knock out at least one series in the fall. Um, and then the other one covers our COVID rule. We had a rule in place where there was... Um, you can label it an exemption or an extra year of eligibility, whatever. We're, we're done with that. There's no more COVID exemption, and we will be, you know, back to more straightforward eligibility rules. All right. Sounds good. Uh, moving on, um, and the couple that I want to touch on here is we have uh, reversed the rule for courtesy runners. Courtesy runners are allowed for the catcher now um, at the Division Two level uh, with any amount of outs, I believe. And the other one that we've reversed is to allow um, re-entry for starters. That's another one that's just at the Division II level. So if a player starts a game, big lead, or you're down big, something happens, and you that player has been substituted out, and they you want to return the starter back into the game, you will be allowed to do so in Division II. And then the last one, um, D, this Division One and Two, we last year um, due to COVID and the year prior. We took away that you were not mandated to play any non-conference games to be eligible for the postseason. We reversed that back to what we originally had. At the Division II level, you will be required to play one non-conference game to be postseason eligible. And in Division I, you will have to play three non-conference games to be eligible for the postseason. Right, right. Those are rules that have been put in place a couple of years ago, just motivating teams to play additional games outside their conference play. With COVID and the question marks of how much inter-campus interaction would be allowed, would it be too hard to actually get non-conference games in? That those rules were suspended basically, and now we've, we're just bringing them back, reinstating them. That yeah, there are minimum non-conference game requirements in order to make the postseason. So, yeah, on top of having a successful conference season. Too. Right. So, all right, good stuff. Very productive meeting. I'm just happy to be a part of it again, um, and I think you know. It's impossible, as the league has grown, just to give some people a backstory there. Uh, you know, in the early days of the NCBA, it was a brick-and-mortar meeting. All teams were invited to it. But that was back when we had like 40 teams. Now we're in the close to 300 realm of teams. You can't get that many people together um, and, and have productive conversations. So a, a rules committee was designed with, with, with people who are elected to represent the teams there. And it's a smaller group of people, but everybody gets a chance to – Every team out there gets a chance to propose rules and, and talk about them, and it becomes a really productive meeting, really good conversation, uh, t negotiating both sides of the fence on every, every decision that's made and ultimately goes down to a vote. So it's a great meeting. Uh, enjoy the dedication of those people that have been you know, elected into their positions to sit on that panel, and very productive. So good stuff. Um, 
So getting on past the rules, what uh, we've got some new teams that have come on board. That's right in your area, right, the, the team recruiting. It is. Um, yes, we have brought on 15 total for the upcoming year, um, and I think our slide here has the eight that we have, um, or ten, excuse me, that we've added since last Sweet 301. Um, so it's great to see the league and as a whole expand, um, and with bringing on so many new teams, I think that helped us tremendously uh, solidify bringing back D3 just to provide a better experience for everybody involved. Excellent, excellent. And, and again, unfortunately, we had to, to suspend play in Division Three due to COVID. We suspended the play in Division Two due to COVID for a year, too. But it's nice to see us getting back, that momentum back that we had pre-COVID uh, with the growth of teams providing platforms for everybody to compete at, at, a, at a level where, you know, it's enjoyable. Uh, everyone's enjoying playing ball. Everyone's competitive. They're, they're getting to play against more of their peers. And uh, we're just another step back to, to regrouping where we were. Yeah, stuff. absolutely. Well, okay, new teams. Now we get into the housekeeping items of uh, what's going on in baseball that the officers need to be working on. Yeah, uh, starting off, we'll have the league meeting tomorrow um, at 7 p.m. Eastern time. And, uh, you know, that's a live and interactive meeting as far as we'll be going through everything that we, all the items that we want to cover during that meeting. But it's for you guys to participate too, um, where you can ask questions live and we'll kind of take a. Uh, Take a break in what we're doing. Answer the questions live. And, you know, if you do have questions, please uh, type them in to the, the Facebook um, live meeting that we'll have set up. That way, there's you're probably not the only one with that question, and it's much better to kind of cover that live. And whether it is live or you watch it recorded to where um, your questions can get answered. All right. Good stuff. Another good uh, uh, meeting there. And uh, anything else you want to add? Um, on the league meeting, I don't think so. Um, we have uh, mentioned swinging the spring paperwork has been sent out to teams. Please contact anybody in the front office, and we'll get you to uh, Antonio Saka, who's heading those questions, and Sandy. Um, it's a great event down there. We'll be back in PCB Beach, where we were last year, all turf fields, great weather. Um, it's just a great experience for everybody, and if you, you've been there, you know about it, and if you haven't, you, you really need to get down there. Absolutely, and I'm heavily involved in the organization of the Swing in the Spring event, uh, the East version, uh, Panama City Beach side of things, and uh, it was a great event last year, finally our first year to, to, to move into that new facility there. Everybody that was there seemed to love it. I'm expecting, you know, probably 100% of those teams are going to renew and come back. Uh, I think going back to your earlier conversation about the fall tournaments and seeing them all filled up, there is a limit as to how many teams we can handle. Even though it's a bigger facility, uh, we have to cap it at 30 teams per week. Um, you might say, oh, 30 teams, that's a ton. Well, several of our weeks had 25 teams last year, so it really only leaves room for an, an additional five. So if it's something your team is interested in, which I hope, you are interested in it because it's a great event, uh, not just getting out of uh, uh, bad weather to play baseball in your spring break, but it's a great way to bond as a team and also play teams from all over the country that you normally wouldn't get to cross paths with. Um, definitely reach out to, to myself or Antonio, and we'll get you squared away on how to create a budget and how to secure your spot and swing in the swing, swing in the spring, Panama City Beach, 2022-2023. All right. I think that's it for the baseball side, right, Jimmy? I think that covers it. All right. Well, thank you. Appreciate you joining us on set. Uh, Christian, I think we're going to move over to some softball action. What do, we got? what do you want to talk about there? Uh, first and foremost, we have uh, three fall tournaments that we're excited to uh, have back up and running in 2023. Two uh, this fall, um, we have the first state showdown in Wilmington, Delaware. That's coming October eighth and 9th and also on the eighth and 9th of October is the Indy Invitational. Um, those uh, uh, what the Indy Invitational is run by Lacey Lautner, and uh, the first state showdown will be run by Mikey Battaglia. Um, last I checked, we had nine. We're hoping for twelve teams for both events. Um, last I checked, I know Lacey had 11, so one more spot open in the Invi Indy Invitational, and then I believe three more spots uh, open in the first state showdown, so don't procrastinate um, on those two events. And our, our uh, third fall tournament is the Peach State Fall Classic uh, down in Columbus, Georgia. Um, I'll be overseeing that event. That's October 1st and 2nd down at the site of the NCSA World Series at uh 
South Common Sports Softball Complex. So I'm um, excited about that. We're looking for eight teams there, and uh, we have five signed up right now, um, but expect that to be filled very shortly. So just, uh, you know, I'm looking at this, the overlay on the screen. Uh, the dates for the first state showdown are... October 8th and 9th. Okay, so we, those dates are incorrect you see on the screen there um, in the Indy. Both Indy and First State are October 8th and 9th. All right, thanks yes. for clarifying that. Thank you. Yes. All right, um, stuff. So, yeah, excited about hosting those. And uh, we still have spots available for each, but um, I know plenty of teams have on their schedule request forms have written down that they are planning on attending that. So um, it's going to be filled. So if you want to get in make sure to send that uh, paperwork over ASAP right. um, as far as updated rules like the the baseball side of things we did have the a uh, little different we had our annual league meeting um, in late April I believe um, or excuse me no when was it uh, running together now it was over the summer I believe um, we had our, our annual league meeting where our teams proposed different rules um, that we could uh, that if another team seconded uh, during the meeting, we put it on our rule proposal ballot, and teams then got to vote on it. Um, that voting has since closed, but we had a uh, great turnout. 107 teams uh, voted. Um, only 144 teams total in the league. So the vast majority of teams voted, which which we That's really tremendous. appreciate. Um, so all your voices were heard. Only two rules were passed out of the uh, – well, I, yeah – Two rules were passed out of the three proposed. Um, the mercy rule went from uh, 10 after 5 to 8 after 5 to match the NCAA. Um, that is in going to be during regular season and postseason games, so that's a pretty big change for you all to remember. And we also added uh, for academic eligibility, any students that are, part, are a part of a inner, um, an IHE program. Um, they they are able. It's an inclusive higher education program at schools um, where the school basically determines uh, their their full time status. Um, you know their their grade point average and things like that. So um, that was put in on the baseball side of things, and uh, was also put in this past year in the softball side of things. So those are the two rules that passed. Another one that was not a rule necessarily is we will be adding academic All-Americans to the uh, to the league this year. So I believe anybody that has above a 3.0 cumulative GPA um, and nominates somebody will, will uh, earn academic All-American honors. Um, so those rules uh, have been put in the rule book. The rule book is online. It has not been mailed out just yet. Um, that will be mailed out later this month um, so that you all have it. But you can certainly go download it off our website right now. All those changes, the Mercy Rule and the IHE Academic Eligibility Rule, is uh, highlighted yellow. So you know that those rules are the, the ones that are updated for this upcoming year. So. That, uh, that takes care of the updated rules. We also uh, have added several new teams to the NCSA this upcoming year. Um, you can get a, a view of those right there. We got uh, Baylor University down in Texas. Uh, speaking with Lacey Lautner, our new team or our director of team development, uh, hoping to have another uh, Arlington Baptist coming on board uh, in Texas, which uh, we in the the office call the the snowball effect or the the tumbleweed effect, where you know, once one team joins, it, it starts this uh, domino effect. Keep giving it different labels, but uh, they're uh, all good. They'll go all good. Yes, they're, they're where once one team joins, others uh, come on board. So we're hoping that's going to happen and open up another conference in the Texas region. Um, Ryder, Millersville, SIUE, Lock Haven, Iona, Stevenson, all are on board as well. Um, since uh, the last episode, so so these are just the seven new teams that have signed on in the last month. Correct. I believe so. I believe, yeah, there's a few more that were that were on uh, last month's episode of this. So, Outstanding. Yeah, really excited about that. Um, as far as housekeeping items going on right now, um, basically every team's paperwork in. I know they're, we're chasing a few teams' paperwork, um, league participation agreements. Um, we need that in ASAP because what we are doing right now is scheduling the conferences. Um, so we are 
literally just got done with meetings. Uh, we finished realignment. Uh, realignment is all updated on the website. So if you go to the easiest way to check that, uh, or at least get a bird's eye view of the realignment, is if you go to the contact uh, page of the website and scroll down, you see each region. Um, and not there wasn't too much movement. Um, you know, a couple teams might have moved a conference, uh, but no vast, you know, crazy move. So chances are you're probably going to be in the same conference you were last year. Maybe a team um, was added or subtracted, but for the most part, they they remain the same. But um, we are going to we are conference doing conference scheduling right now. So if you're one of those teams that do not have an LPA in that have said, hey, yeah, we're getting it in, we still need that paperwork. So that's something to take care of. Um, we do hope we'll be working on conference scheduling this week, and I hope by Monday um, we will have the vast majority um, of conferences scheduled and emailed out online, posted online, so that you know your conference schedule for the entire year so you can be begin planning. Um, but once we finalize a conference schedule, we will email you the details. We'll email you your conference opponents' contact information so that you can get in touch with them. Um, so be on the lookout for that. I know we are shooting for August 15th to get conference schedules out. We're a little um, behind, but hopefully at most a week behind. Um, but I hope to start pumping out some schedules uh, starting as early as tomorrow, maybe even Thursday. So um, look out for that. Um, you know, obviously, we talked about the swing into spring. That is also open to softball teams. So, well, is that paperwork coming out soon? I expect by the end of this week, we will have registration paperwork open up for the softball side of swing into spring in Panama City Beach, ready to go this week. So, okay. look for that coming out. Um, we're looking to grow that event on the softball side. It's we had a record number of teams that ever came to spring training last year on the softball side, and we're looking to. Yeah, I think our goal is to double the number of teams we had. So uh, we really Good. want to expand the softball footprint, given that we have such a, a big facility with so many so, so much access to softball playing fields. You know, we could technically have five softball fields going at a time there if if we can get the teams to come down and support that that need. So there's a lot of accessibility there. We're excited to grow that event and should have the the pricing finalized on it this week. Good stuff. So uh, that's pretty much recaps NCSA, but obviously a lot of important information coming out here this week and early next week. So uh, be sure to check your emails for that information to be in your inbox. All right. Thank you, Christian, for the softball update. All right. We're going to take a short commercial break, and we'll be back to you. When we get back to you, we'll be talking about basketball. The game is the official headwear sponsor for Cold Club Sports. They offer our team's quality headwear, such as hats, visors, boonies, and beanies, for a great low price. All items are customizable to meet our team's needs. Contact Felicia.Battaglia at ColdClubSports.com for all of your headwear needs. Rawlings is the proud uniform, equipment, and ball sponsor of the National Club Baseball and Softball Associations. Teams receive up to 45% off on all their orders. For more information, including catalogs and price quotes, contact our front office today. All right, welcome back. Ready welcome. To go. Welcome back. All right, we're going to dive into some basketball. Let's flip a coin. Let's get, we're going to start with men's basketball. So in that case, let's invite Matt Hazy to the hello, stand. Hello to uh, chat us up on some men's basketball updates. All right. First off, uh, we got the fall tournaments going on. We have two of them so far. Uh, we have the Happy Valley tip-off, which will be in State College uh, at the Nittany Valley Sports Center. Uh, that'll be the first weekend of November. Uh, that one is actually full right now. We do have 16 teams. Uh, and we have a wait list as well. Um, and this and is then, the third annual yes, version Yes, yeah, third tournament. annual. Uh, and then we do have the first annual uh, Chippewa Fall Tip-Off Tournament. Uh, that'll be the same weekend, November 4th and 6th. Uh, that'll be at the Central Michigan Student Activity Center. Uh, and we still have plenty of spots open for that. So uh, if you're interested in that, you know, shoot me an email, give me a call. I'll be sure to get the registration forms out to you. And this is open to women's teams as well, right? Yes. yes. Yeah. So it's full on the, on the women's side at State College, but I believe we're still... Signing women's team up, yeah, or is that full? Women's teams are still open. Alec will be able to speak on that a little more. Uh, if he's coming on, I'm not, I'm not sure. Yeah, I but, believe he is. Um, men's teams are full for Happy Valley. Uh, we do have a wait list of five, I believe. So, Wow. Um, yeah. 
So, uh, you know, people were really interested in that. Uh, and you never know. Stay up, stay up to date. You never know. Something might happen uh, where you have a chance to get in. So, All right. might even open it to uh, 20 men's teams. May, potentially. Yeah, you never know. Beautiful. Exciting stuff. Good work. Good work. I like to see the growth of a second tournament. And is there talks about maybe launching Potent a third? Potentially. Potentially. Um, yeah, we're, we're talking with uh, Hickory, North Carolina. Uh, to kind of break down into the South Atlantic, we have a facility. We can do the pricing. Just trying to find some uh, officials for that event, get in touch with them to make sure that uh, pricing is something that we can make happen financially. So um, hopefully having that uh, opened up shortly, but Matt and I are, are working on that. Working on that yeah. Oh, good stuff. I like to hear I like to hear about growth. makes me excited. Absolutely. Uh, speaking of growth, nice segue. We've added some new teams, I believe, yes, onto the have. men's side. What do we got there? Absolutely. So we have eight total uh, teams um, for this upcoming season, but these three are the most recent. Uh, we have Penn West Clarion, uh, Clark University, which is located up in Massachusetts, and then Lehigh University, which is uh, in eastern Pennsylvania. All right. Uh, and actually, fun fact, Penn West Clarion is Christian's alumni. Give me a shot, Tone. <laughs> Get a shot at me, Tone. Let's go Golden Eagles. <laughs> fly, Eagles, fly. So, yeah, so far that's the three most recent teams. We still have uh, are in talks with, with a bunch of other teams, so just waiting for some stuff to come in, and uh, hopefully we're looking to grow even more. All right. Penn West Clarion, I mean, Christian is a notable alumni of there. I am on the Wikipedia page. Um, <laughs> however, the biggest basketball alumni of Penn West Clarion would be... I'm not did, sure. Did, wasn't that, didn't the coach... Uh, can oh, Calipari. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, I think well, he was there a few years. But yeah, I mean, I think the court's now called Calipari Court. But yes, yes, uh, John Calipari, uh, alumni there. There we go. All right. See, that's my random fact about Clarion. It's also a Harvard branch campus, which a lot of people don't know about. <laughs> but <laughs> They call it the, the Harvard of Northwestern Pennsylvania. Yeah. So. All right. Good stuff. Um, now, on the men's basketball side, now we've got a little more time. You know, we're on the baseball and softball time side we're talking about realignment we're talking about schedules we're not there yet on basketball because basketball season doesn't start till november 1st officially um so we've got some more time we're hopefully we'll be adding some more new teams then we'll get into the realignment there on the men's basketball side uh when should teams be uh worrying about getting their schedule requests in for the fall yeah absolutely so set schedule request forms went out yesterday uh and those are due back to me by august 30th uh, so that way we'll start looking at realignment, start looking at giving conference schedules out and everything like that by September 15th. Awesome. Good stuff. So, Sounds like uh, the men's basketball season is uh, progressing nicely. Yes. Good stuff. Well, thank you very much, Matt. We appreciate you joining us on set. And now let's invite to the set, virtually, Alec Verhoff to give us some updates on women's basketball. There he is. Can you hear me? We can hear you. Hi, Alec. Awesome. You, look, you, look, you look like you're struggling to call me Alec there. You always just want to call me Bubby right off the bat. I, well, hey. You know, only friends and family get to call you uh, Bubby, right? That's true. That's true. You're neither okay. of those. <laughs> <laughs> well said. <laughs> you're fired. Things off of women's basketball. Um, we'll get into the uh, fall tournaments just like with men's. Same two that Matt was talking about. We have the Happy Valley fall tip-off. For women's, uh, this is the second annual for that one. We still have a few spots open. We're looking for eight teams. Um, we've, we've got quite a few signed up, but a couple spots open. So if you do want to come into that one, send me some paperwork. Um, you know, I sent that out. If you have any questions, always feel free to reach out. We're also doing the same down in Central Michigan with the Chippewa fall tip-off. That one, we're looking at eight teams as well. Um, we have more spots open for that one. So even if, you know, even if State College fills up, We've got Chippewa fall tip off right there. Um, again, if you have any questions or if you'd like to get more information, reach out to me. Happy to help. But those are the two on the women's side that we have right now. And those are open to men's as well, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Right. <laughs> yeah. He's like, I don't know. Talk to Matt. Let's bring Matt back on. <laughs> yes, confirmed. <laughs> okay. Good to know. Uh, All right. Moving on from there, uh, we do have some new teams coming on board. Um, we did add, since the last show, we have four new teams. Bucknell, Cornell, George Washington, and RPI. That gives us six new teams officially. Uh, we also have a few other new teams that are working on paperwork. So be on the lookout here in the near, near future, and hopefully we'll have um, 
those teams coming on board. We'll get them announced and everything. All right, good stuff. Excited to see. Like I said, a little just a little bit ago. Excited to see and hear about growth. Uh, on the basketball, women's basketball side, what kind of housekeeping items should those teams be worried on, worried about right now, focused on? Same as men's, really. Um, schedule request form. Look to get those in. Um, we have a couple weeks to get those submitted. By to create the schedules, get those. Fifteenth. All right. I think you said you broke up a little bit there, but I think you said schedule request forms are due August thirtieth. August thirtieth, so that you can get schedules released September fifteenth. Sounded like what you were trying to get across there, Bobby. Thanks so much for t uh, for chiming in, joining us on the show. Appreciate the update and the hard work on the women's basketball side. Um, I think that closes things out for the August episode of Sweet Three Hundred One. Unless I'm missing something, Christian. No. Nope. There you go. Well, that's our show for this month. Uh, we appreciate you tuning in, and we hope that you'll join us in the future uh, for further episodes of Sweet 301. And don't forget to keep up with all of our social media accounts for updates as there's exciting announcements coming out every day, realignment, new teams, schedules, new tournaments popping up. Make sure you're getting all that information. Communication is key. You can always just read it right there. Yeah, but then i got to look away from the camera. I can't read and look at the camera at the same time. I'll do what I'm told, Antonio. Next episode, September 20th at Sweet. <laughs> I can't read it, though. At 3.01 <laughs> p.m. Eastern Standard Time right here on Facebook Live. And if you'd like to donate money so we can get a teleprompter, then we can look at you and read at the same time. Feel yeah. free. Yeah, make sure to join us to catch up on everything that's happening around Cool Club Sports. All right. And don't forget, it's a game. Have, Have fun. fun.